What should we do if we have disagreements with each other? That's what we're going to talk about today in Romans 14. So this whole letter coming from Paul, trying to bring together, it sounds like a church that is having some kind of a disagreement, maybe between the Jewish part and the Gentile part. And he's telling them, you're all part of the same tree. You can't do without each other. The tree needs its stem, its, its root, its main trunk, and you need the branches. And if there's a branch that isn't doing what it should, producing fruit, it can be chopped off just like other branches get chopped off. So he is trying to give that message of what really matters in this relationship. And so he comes in here now to set, talk about passing judgment. That's what the editors of ESV named this chapter. And so he said that if someone's weak in their faith, welcome him, but not quarrel over opinion. Because one person might believe that you can eat anything. There are no other gods. Even if you had food dedicated to other gods, it doesn't matter. There are no other gods. It's just silly, right? And you, you would see today that if you saw something on it that said something about Mother Earth, we don't believe in Mother Earth, so not a matter. So it's not a problem. What happened was back in these days is that they would take the finest cuts of meat and dedicate them to gods. So if you saw that this was dedicated to another god, it was an indication this is the best. So what are you going to do? Buy the worst that's not dedicated to other gods or buy the best? And like I said, what if we had our meat labeled to Mother Earth? Would we eat it or would we not eat it? And so he's like, don't pass judgment on those people who either eat it or who don't want to eat it. You have to be, he says, your own master it is before God whether that person stands or falls. And he said, he will be upheld because the Lord is able to make him stand. And it's not our job, this quote, who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? To say these things, and boy, we do this all the time. And I think that in general, it's hard when we see people we think are doing something that's clearly wrong. I mean, it could be over a dozen topics. Jesus talked about the core and Paul's talking about the core, but there's all these other issues. And are we going to fight about it? Are we going to have bad blood between us because we think Jesus had brothers and other people think Jesus didn't have brothers? Is that a reason for us to condemn each other and dispute with each other? Or are we going to just say the, the core of the Christian faith is really where it's at? I even know people in talking about my own church said that we have quarreled with others where we should not have. And people in my church would say, no, these are important matters. And so this is where it gets very difficult. What is an important matter and what is just a matter of opinion? And then he goes on to say that someone observes the day as the honor to the Lord and the other one who eats, eats in honor of the Lord. And he gives thanks to the Lord. And if he abstains, then he's doing that to the Lord too, because none of us lives to himself. None of us dies to himself. We're not living now anymore for ourselves. We're living for God. And if we live for the Lord and we die for the Lord, then the Lord is with us. And that's what the most important thing of it is. I think that observes the day, meaning Sabbath. There are probably some believers at that time who still kept the Sabbath. There are others that said, no, 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 Jesus released us from the Sabbath. In fact, he was quite clear about the role of the Sabbath being for man. Well, if it's for man, and someone wants to do it, do it. It's kind of what I was saying, that if I find rest in having a Sabbath, why not? If I don't, which I don't, then don't do it. There's no judgment either way. So I think that's the point he's trying to get to. Just live at peace with each other. So like I said, this is a big, long letter. As much as it's up to you, live in peace with each other. And he says, you know, to that end, we're all just living, dying for Christ. And he is both the Lord of the dead and the living. So don't pass him. Don't despise him. Don't think poorly of him. And everyone is going to bow before God. Every tongue will confess. That, that's his doing. But he also says, don't cause other people to fall. He says, let's not pass judgment, but rather decide never to put a stumbling block or hindrance in their way. We're going to talk about why that comes in, because again, 
it comes down to what it is that Peter saw and what Jesus talked about unclean and clean meat. There's nothing in itself that's unclean. What's unclean is what's in your heart, not the type of meat you eat, not the way it was killed, not who it was dedicated on. That has no bearing in this anymore. And if we do that, if we're grieved at each other for fighting over that, we don't have the love of God in us. And if we're talking about good and if we're talking about Christ and we're talking about the kingdom of God, it's, it's not evil. Because he, he just lays it flat out. You know, the kingdom of heaven, it's not about eating and drinking. I mean, we're going to eat and drink, but this whole business about what you're eating and drinking, that's not anything to do with peace and joy in the spirit. And if you're serving Christ, you should also be acceptable to each other. So let's pursue peace and mutual upbuilding. Wouldn't that be nice if we did that? Boy, we don't do that. So again, talking about the food, the food, all the food is the work of God. Everything is clean. That's the end of it. If you are going to make someone stumble by eating this, then it's not good to do either. When I was in college and we would watch movies and people would be like, oh, I don't think a Christian should see a movie like this. In some people's mind, and mine was one of them at the time, I thought, well, you know, it doesn't really matter. It's not affecting me. It's not bringing hatred in my heart. It's a really interesting historical picture about Roman gladiators. I'm just making something up, right? It's not affecting me. So, you know, get off my back. Oh, but this person is harmed by it. They're seeing this and they're, you know, maybe sad that I don't believe like they do or I'm making them watch it too because they're my roommate. And so now I'm making them watch this movie they don't want to see. You know what? If someone feels like they shouldn't eat a certain kind of meat, if they should have Sabbath on Saturday, if they should watch this or not watch that, let them be, you know, and don't force them into it. And maybe don't even do it in front of them. Don't be a stumbling block to other people. It is important we hold each other up. It is important that we are supportive of each other and helpful in their faith. You know, if I was watching a movie about Roman gladiators and maybe there was something in there that the other person is offended by, Maybe I just watch the movie later, something like that. Oh, all by myself. I don't even bring it up. He says that the faith that you have, keep it between you and God. And that's not to say that our faith is private. We shouldn't talk about it to other people, which we hear in this society too. There's a bunch of people now saying, oh, you have the freedom of faith in the United States as long as you just keep it to yourself. That's not what he's saying. He's just saying that what rules you set up, things that offend you, things that don't offend you. You know, just talk to God about it. Have this conversation with him. Keep it between the two of you. But there's no reason to judge each other, be a stumbling block to each other. Just let, let people express their faith in whichever way they want to express it. I've seen many different people who express their faith in different ways. I do. There are people I'm friends with who will give up things for Lent and go through a lot of hoops to try to keep that. It's not something I happen to do, but it's also something I don't have to fight with them about. It's not something they have to fight with me about. And I've traveled with people during Lent, and th there was a restaurant I wanted to go to, and it was a barbecue place, and we were only gonna have this opportunity on Friday night to go to this place. But if I'm gonna cause my brother to stumble, and this fact, my sister, uh, who was a coworker? I'm not doing it. I'm not going to cause her to stumble just because I want a little barbecue, right? That's how we're going to keep each other in love and respect. So you can tell that he is now tying this together and trying to bring maybe a splintered church together so they can worship and believe with each other. Well, that ends chapter 14. And what I'm going to pray about is this reconciliation between Jew and Gentile, between people so that there's no more animosity, so there's no more us or them. Like I said before, there was this idea that we're now the chosen people and the Jewish people have been left. That turned out not to be true. Let's pray for each other. I'm, I guess, half of both. I'm half Jewish and half Gentile. We should be together as one group, but that maybe also means other denominations, other faith, Catholic and Protestant. We disagree on many, many things. But can we bring to ourselves together and worship Christ and both be good and not cause each other to stumble? What I'm going to pray about is unity inside the church. Boy, we need it more than ever. I think that when 
the popular culture is for you. I, I'll say it like that, or not against you. It's easy for us to start fighting with each other, splintering, splintering. Yeah, I know there's a church over by us, and I think they're both Lutheran, and they split into East and West. They couldn't even be a church together, so one had to build a church on the other side of the street so they could be East and West. Boy, we need prayers for unity inside of the church. And what I'm going to share with others is that God called us to be there for each other, to share with each other, and again, uphold them, make them stronger without passing judgment on them, without taking our rules and implying them on someone else, or taking their rules and being offended by them. Boy, wouldn't it be nice if we had unity in the church once again? All right, everyone, thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Please remember to subscribe and tell a friend or a Bible study. Again, if you have a Bible study that you would like me to come and talk to, I'm doing a presentation in a college in two weeks. I talk to groups frequently enough, and I would love to talk to yours if you have a group that would be interested in hearing from me. Thanks so much for listening. I appreciate it always. Have a wonderful day.